Okay, this teaching is going to be on what is the church. I know we have a lot of churches here, and we have a lot of religions, but I want to see what the Bible says, what is the church, and what is religion. Um, again, I'll always be giving you a lot of scriptures just like I do in my other tapes. So have your paper and pencil ready to write these scriptures down and then read them for yourself. Now before I get started, I also want to say, I'm going to be saying a lot of things against the church. But also at the same time, I'm not telling people not to go to church. What I'm doing here is showing what is church biblically. So when you do go to church, you can accept the biblical part of the church that they are doing. But the things that they're doing that are not biblical, you can stay away from and not participate in, if you understand what I'm saying. So I'm not... This is uh, not a teaching on staying away from church. This is just a teaching on what is the church and what you need to look for in your church and see if it's a biblical church. And this is what this teaching is on. You know, the church started in Acts after Jesus resurrected. Before Acts, they had the temple, the synagogue, where they would go. But Jesus, when he resurrected, he is now the temple. And that's why he says we are the temple. Because the church in the temple was no longer where they sacrificed the animals. Because Jesus was the final sacrifice. The Bible speaks of the church as being a group of believers. And that's what the definition of church is. And remember this. The church is not a building. It's a group of people. And it's not an organization. It's just a group of believers. Now in the Bible, they have several church uh, verses that show that church began in the house, that churches were in the house. Like in Acts 20.20, 20, it says, And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have shown you and have taught you publicly from house to house. So they had churches in the house. He didn't call it a building, a temple, a tabernacle. Also in Acts chapter 2, verses one and two, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Again, it says house. You know, if the church was feeding the needy, and that also means spiritual food like missionary work, or are they spending the tithe on material things? The tithe money... The tithe money is, is to feed your pastor and is to feed the hungry, to take care of the widows. That's what the tithe money is for. It's for missionary work. The tithe money is not for fancy buildings with stained glass windows, for church uh, robes. There's many things the, the churches, many churches, many different religions spend the tithe money on. And the Bible doesn't say to spend that on on, uh, on these things. Secretaries. You know, now that we have put the church in a building, now it's more treated like a business. Because we've got to pay secretaries, and we've got to pay for the building, and we gotta we got to pay for all kinds of stuff, and they do that with the tithe money. Well, if the church would have stayed in the house, all that money that the church brings in, and believe me, the churches, all churches, they bring in a lot of money. And if we was to feed the poor with that money, we'd have a lot more people coming to know the Lord. Because then they would see the love of God. But instead, they spend it on church buildings. This is wrong. I'm going to say this is wrong because nowhere in the Bible does it say to have a big fancy building for a church. It said churches was in the house. Churches were in the house on the block. On the block where people lived, where people could get involved. You know, you put it, these churches that are on the corners, and most of them are on busy streets. People pass by them all the time. But as long as we stay inside, the people doesn't care. They don't care what we do inside that church because we're not bothering them. But if churches was in the home, in the house, in the neighborhood, then we can get more people involved. Also, church in the... In the uh, in the Bible, it speaks where they met daily. They didn't just meet on Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night. It was a daily thing to them. 
in Matthew 26, 55, it says, In that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are you come out as against a thief with a sword and, and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple. He sat daily teaching in the temple. Now here, like I said, before Jesus, they did have a temple, and that's where they taught. I'm talking about after Jesus was the church and house to house. So right here, Jesus was still alive, so there was a temple. And he said, I daily, he sat with them, teaching. And in Acts 2, verses 46 and 47, And they continued daily with one accord in the temple. In 47, it says, And the Lord added to the church daily. So this was a daily thing. This wasn't like it is nowadays where you just go to church twice a week, if that much. In Acts 5.42, it says, And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Acts 16.5, And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Acts 17.11, There were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, daily. So I'm showing here churches in the in the in the in the Bible they met daily. If the church was in homes and lasted all day and was only one or two days a week, but every day, we would separate the religious people from the true Christians. Because religious people wouldn't do that. Now true Christians, Christians who are hungry for the word of God, they could meet every day. The Lord is not impressed with stained glass windows or big fancy churches. He wants a church that is filled with the Holy Spirit and they're going out and reaching the lost. And that's what the church is for. We go to church, we learn about our Lord, and we go out and tell others. That's our ministry. And I have a tape on our ministry. If you want it, all you got to do is call that number on the tape and I'll send it to you. Now also in the church, they didn't have men in high positions. Everyone was equal in the church. Now you had your preachers, but the preachers and the and the elders of the church were servants. They didn't sit in front of the church and in some churches they have these big old chairs where they sit in and they're sitting up there all high and mighty. That was not the church. The Lord doesn't want that. He doesn't want you to act like you're something a big, honorable, respectable person because we're all, in God's eyes, Christians are Christians. There is not a, a higher or more respectable Christian than the other. But then you go to some of these churches and you see these men sitting up there. Man, they got their nose so high up in the air. I don't see how they, cl they claim to be Christians. We're servants of the Lord. Preachers are servants of the Lord. They're out to help people. Not to be higher than them, but to help them. Jesus is speaking to his disciples in Mark uh, chapter 10 verses 40 through, 42 through 44 and in uh, verse 42 is the way he doesn't want us to be but in 43 and 44 that's the way we should be and he says in verse 42 but Jesus called them to him and saith unto them ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them and their great ones exercise authority over them. So people who are in authority, they exercise their lordship. Like, I am lord here. That's not the way the Lord wants it. He wants it like verse 43 and 44. And he says, For so shall it be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. So, so, Preachers, teachers, they're supposed to be servants, elders of the church, deacons. We're supposed to be servants, not high, mighty men who sit on at the top uh, at the church, you know, and then we uh, stand at the door. I mean, it's okay to stand at the door when church is over and just say, thank you for coming, stuff like that. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong, but there's some men who, who stand there, and, and some of them, they accept the kissing of the hand. I've seen it. I've seen these men accept that, and that is wrong. That is wrong. We are not higher than anyone else that is born again. 
We're just given the gift of teaching or preaching. But we are equal with everyone else. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 2 and 3, it says, Feed the flock. That's what ministers are for. That's what preachers and teachers are for, is to feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, by will, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. I hope y'all heard what he said here, not for filthy lucre. You know what lucre is? It's money. Not to do it for money. You turn on the TV. Put it on the Christian station. Half of what's on that Christian station is asking for money. Now, I'm going to be bold here. I'm, I'm you know, uh, if you're a religious person, you're, not, you're probably not going to like this tape. But I'm going to tell you right now, and I'll show later on in, in, uh, in this teaching, that a man who is asking for money or begging for money, because they sure do beg, but a man who, who is asking or begging for money, he is not in the will of God. He is not in the will of God. And I'm sorry, but that Christian station on TV, that's half of what they do is ask for money. The Lord sent out, when he sent out his disciples, he said, take nothing with you. That he would supply their needs. So if you're in the will of God, and he wants you to start a ministry, he will give you what you need for that ministry. Nowhere in the, in the Bible does it say, to go out and beg for money. That's not the, the Lord doesn't have to beg us to start a ministry. So if this man is in the will of God, the money will come. The Lord, he owns everything. Everything is his. He can provide that, that minister anything he needs for his ministry. He will not have to beg to start a ministry if this is what the Lord wants. In verse 3, it says, Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being the samples to the flock. So again, I'm just, it's just shown they're not supposed to be lord over us. A shepherd guides his, his sheep. A preacher helps his, his, his followers. He's there to help, not be lordship over us. Like, I am the man, I'm here and you're there. I'm higher and you're a little lower than me. Now, if you have a preacher that acts that way, I would start praying and asking the Lord, Hey, is this where you want me? In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, Not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers, helpers of your joy, for by faith you stand. So right here, he's talking about the preacher again. They don't have dominion over our faith. We have our own faith, for by our faith do we stand. Not by a preacher. It is wrong for a person to go out and tell someone about the Lord and while he's talking to them, he says, my preacher says, no, 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 no. We are supposed to know what the scriptures say. When the preacher preaches it to us and we see it in the word of God and we know where it's at in the word of God, then we can tell others, well, the Bible says but we go to people and say, the preacher said, well, that's just another man. And men, a lot of men have uh, opinions and what they think. Well, to tell you the truth, people really don't want to hear other people's opinion and what they think. If you can come to them with the scriptures and show them, and show them in the word of God what the scriptures say, then you're standing on the rock. But if you go to them and say, my preacher said, that's a very weak, very Weak. They had leadership in the church, like Paul. But believe me, they didn't take it as, I am higher than you. Leadership in the church, we need. There has to be a, like a chain of command in the church, just like there is in the Word of God. We should just go and have church. This membership stuff, that's not, a, that's not biblical. It's not biblical that you sign some paper and say okay I'm a member here now that's that's a business that's being organized and like I said before that is not the church the church is not an organized program we should just go and have church hear the sing praises to the Lord worship the Lord and there's a difference between the two 
A lot of people do sing praises to the Lord, but very few churches do I see have worship the Lord. And I have a tape on that. It's called True Worship. But these are things that you do when you go to church. And you hear the word of God. This is church. And also, they had no tax deductible for when you tithe. When you tithe back then, you tithe. You didn't expect anything back like uh, for your taxes. Some people tithe just because of the taxes. And back then, they didn't have long robes or color different colors of robes to show you know, that you were educated or uh, some churches, the colors tell how high you are in that religion. They didn't have all that. We've got to read Luke chapter 20, verse 46. It says, Beware of the scribes, which is a religious uh, group of people in, in, the, in the Bible, which desire to walk in long robes and love greetings in the markets and the sit and the highest seat in the synagogues and the chief rooms at feasts, which I have been saying. The Lord said, beware of them. Beware of, of preachers like that who want to be uh, noticed this way. It says to beware of that. And believe it or not, they didn't have Sunday school. Sunday school, it's good, but Sunday school is just another place where you go learn the word. You know, Sunday school is church. You know, we have Sunday school, then we have church. Well, really, both of them are the same thing. And in Sunday school, in the church of uh, the time of Jesus, they didn't have books that came from other places to, to give to the teacher so the teacher can see what to teach on. No. If you're a teacher, you're led by the Holy Spirit to teach on what the Lord leads you to teach. It's not an organized program where, okay, we're going to study this book from this time to this time and then or and from this date to date that to that date no that's not what what teaching Sunday school is teaching Sunday school is being a teacher praying to the Lord and say okay Lord what should I teach on and then the Lord shows you it's not a book that comes from where men write books and say okay this is what we teach on this week or next week or whatever that is from man that is organized from man and that is not moving in the spirit. And again, I say, there were no stained glass windows. Now, now I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to be religious, believe me, there's a lot of churches out there you can be, you can feel religious in. Because they have them. But if you want to go to grow in the Lord, then you need to find a church where all they do is teach the word of God. They have churches with statues in them. You know, and I'm going to say to Catholics, I mean, I'm going to be pointing out religions here. And if you don't like it, you can just go ahead and turn off this tape. But I'm going to give you the Word of God. I'm going to give you the Word of God. Because later on, I'm going to show you how Jesus did it himself. And Jesus is my teacher. I looked at Jesus on how to do things. And when he shows in the Bible the religious leaders and he calls them for what they are, then I have been shown that we need to point out the wrongs in the church or in a person. And some of y'all might be saying, well, we're not supposed to judge. No, in the Bible where it talks about judging, it says, judge not that you be not judged. Well, if you read the next verses, it says, but if you do judge, make sure whatever you're judging that person on, make sure that you don't have a beam in your eye before you try to take a speck out of somebody else's eye. So he says, when you judge, do it in that way. But some people, all they read is just that one verse where it says not to judge, and then that's it. People need to learn how to read their Bible. Read the verses before a verse and after the verse to see what that verse means. Now, these churches where they have the, the statues, and again, I say the, the Catholics, you know, they took the second commandment. They just took it out of the Ten Commandments. But it's in the Bible. It's in Exodus 20. Verses 3 through, through 5. It says, Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. 
for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. And that's the second commandment. It says not not to bow down to to uh, graven images. Well, that's all the church has. It's got statues all over the place. And they do pray to them. And right here it says not to do it. So the Catholics have taken the second commandment and just totally have taken it out of the Ten Commandments. So with this teaching and these scriptures I'm giving you, read them. And then ask yourself, do you need to be in the church that you're in? Now there's other verses in the Bible, like in Romans 16.5. It talks about the church being in the house. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 19, the same thing. Philemon, verse 2. Talks about the same thing. Churches is in the house. These church buildings, I'm preaching against church buildings. But, like I said at the beginning, right now that's all we have. Now, this ministry I have, this tape ministry, it's called Home Church Ministry, tape ministry. And this is for people who can't go to church. This is for people who don't know what religion to go to, what, what church to go to. And this is for people who just want to know the truth that don't want to be no religion. Because I'm no religion. I'm just a Christian. That's it. Preaching the Word of God. That's who I am. And people are fed up with all these different denominations out there. So I'm hoping these tapes will reach those who don't want to go to church. Or maybe who are embarrassed to go to church because in some churches where they pass the plate, that is an embarrassing thing. People who don't have money they're embarrassed that they can't put money in the plate, so they don't go. We shouldn't do that. Churches should not pass the plate. There's churches I've been in where they have a box on the side of the door or somewhere, and it says tithe on it, and that's it. They don't point to it. They don't tell you about it. Someone in the church would have to tell you, hey, if you want to give, there's a box over there that you can give your 10% if you want. But to pass the plate, that is wrong. That is wrong. We should not be passing the plate in the church. And another thing, churches are supposed to be laid back. Just go to church in your work clothes if, if that's what you do. I mean, so a lot of people don't go to church because they're poor and they don't have the money to wear nice clothes. Coats and ties or nice dresses. So they don't go to church. Things like these hinder people from going to church. And when the church does things like that that hinder people from going, we shouldn't do it. We shouldn't pass the plate, and we, we shouldn't make it to where people feel bad if all they have is jeans and a T-shirt to go to church in. But believe it or not, that's the way it is. I've seen it also in the church. When they're ready for more deacons or elders or even to have a pastor come in, they vote about it. Well, you know, voting is against God's will. Because if you read the Bible, every time they voted in the, in the Bible, it went against God's will. Just like Joshua, when they went into the land and saw giants, they came back and reported to the rest of uh, Israel and said, there's giants in the land. And so they voted on whether to go in or not. Well, it was God's will for them to go in. The, the Lord said, that is your land. That is yours. And the Lord had already said it. But they voted to see if they should go in there and take the land. See what I'm saying? Voting is not a Christian way. Voting is not the way of God. We hear from the Lord, then we do something, whatever it may be. They didn't vote for elders or deacons in, in, the, in the Bible. They weren't voted in. Paul, Paul and uh, Peter, they would pray. And then the Lord would show them who to anoint to be the next elder or deacon. Paul was, was appointed to this. He ordained elders in the church. He, was a, he appointed them in the cities he went into because he was a man of God. And the Lord would speak to him. The church I used to go to. I would lift my hands in church. If the Lord led me to lift my hands in church, I would do it. But now the Baptists, you know, you really don't do that in the Baptist church. They don't like that. And then one day, the preacher asked me if I would preach a sermon for him. Because he had to go out of town. And I said, yes. I prayed about it. And the Lord showed me what scriptures to use and what to preach on. And when he gave me the scriptures and what to preach on, I was like, Lord... If you wanted me to preach this to the Pentecostals, I wouldn't have a problem with that. But you want me to say this to the Baptists? And what he wanted me to preach on was lifting hands in church, moving in the Spirit. But this is what the Lord wanted. So I did what the Lord said. I preached on how it was biblical 
to lift your hands in church. I preach how it was okay to say amen or glory to God, whatever whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to say when you get excited in the Word. And believe me, we should be getting excited. We should have an excitement when we hear the Word of God. Because the Word is powerful. It's quick and powerful, Hebrews 4.12 says. So when the man is preaching the Word and we receive it in the Spirit, there should be an excitement there. You shouldn't be just sitting there like a bump on a log. Excuse my expression, but that's the way a lot of us do. We're just sitting there. We're hearing the Word of God. We're not hearing a story. We're hearing the Word of God, and there should be excitement there. Now, after this sermon was over, one of the deacons in that church, an old-time deacon too, he came up to him and he says, I agree with everything you preached on. He said, but I'm a deacon here, and I can't do that. Can you believe that? This man came to me and told me he agreed with the Scriptures, with the Lord. But because of him being a deacon in that church... He couldn't do that. Now, where is this man's loyalty? And that's what we need to do. We need to break away from this loyalty of our religion or to the denomination we're in. And if we're shown by the Word of God that is against the way you've been taught, then you need to take a stand and say, I'm following the Word. If my religion, my denomination, if they're saying we can't do this, but the Bible says we can then you need to move. You need to move. You're not loyal to any church. You're not loyal to any religion in God's eyes. The only, the only thing the Lord wants your loyalty in is in Him. Is in Him and His Word. That's it. So those of you who are more loyal to, to your church than your other Lord, I would repent if I was you. Because following the Lord will give you, will, will send you in the right direction following your religious beliefs and your traditions that will send you in the wrong wrong direction and I will show that later on into the teaching now here's another one y'all probably not going to like there are no women leaders in the church no women leaders in the church there are no women who are supposed to preach in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12 it says but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the men but to be in silence. Now I know some of y'all are going to be like, well that was just for back then. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to show also later on in the teaching that the things that were said here, biblical, in this verses right now, are still for the day. Because the Lord changes not. That's in Malachi. He says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm going to show these things. But women are not supposed to have leadership in the church. Women can teach other women and the Bible teaches that. But women are not supposed to be over men. Nowhere in the Bible does it show a woman being over the man. The Lord always had the man in authority. And let me just say this real quick. I'm not saying that God loves men more than women. Because in God's grace, in His love and in His grace, His mercy, we are all equal. Men are equal with women. We are the same. But the Lord does have a chain of command. And he has put the man over the church, over the woman, in the church, and at home. And I'll get on that later. But I'm just showing you, women are not supposed to be preachers or teachers. They can be teachers if it's over other women, but te but not teachers over men. This is the word of the of the Lord. Like I said, if you're religious, you're you're probably not going to like this tape. But you got to make up your mind. Am I going to follow the Word of God, or am I going to follow my religion? So let's go over some things that the church is supposed to do. Of course, they're supposed to be preaching in church. Acts 5.42 And in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. So we know there's preaching in the church. There's also baptisms. Acts 19.5 when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When they heard the gospel, when they heard what the gospel was, what it meant to them, and how they needed it, they were baptized. Souls were being saved in the church. Acts 2.47 And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The Lord added to the church daily. 
When we say the Lord, we're saying the Holy Spirit that lives in us because the, the Lord uses us to go out and witness to people. And so they were out. You know, the Jehovah Witnesses, I'm not going to say we should be like them on door to door. And by the way, there's some churches in here I'm just going to point out, you know, what's not biblical that they might be doing. But there's some churches, I won't point nothing out, but to say that they're cults. And a church that doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that doesn't believe in the Holy in the uh, Trinity, that is not a church of God. And that's what the Jehovah Witnesses are. They believe just in Jehovah. They believe Jesus was just a man and was not God and was not the Holy Spirit. So Jehovah Witnesses is totally out. I'm, then that's it. I'm, that's all I'm going to say about them. If you want to know more about them, call the number and I'll tell you. But souls were being saved daily. And like I said, these Jehovah Witnesses that go door to door, they're not far off from the way it should be. We who have the true, the true truth, the word of God, the true word of God, the people who have the power of the Holy Spirit are not even working as hard as the demons are. They are out there door to door. They are really serving what they believe is to be right, but is wrong. But they are really working hard for what they believe. And we, the true people of God, we're, we're not as, as good a servants as they are. Because if we were, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Back then it was true. It's not now. And we've got to ask ourselves why. Also in the church, you should be glad to receive the word of God, which I've said before. In Acts 2.41, Then they that gladly received his word, Glad, gladly received his word. Even if it was stepping on their toes, they were gladly receiving it. Like I said before, the Holy Spirit that is in you, it receives the word of God. It receives the word of God. And we, we should have some kind of excitement, some kind of emotion there, excited that we're hearing the word of God, that we're listening to our Father speak to us through a man. But it is our Father, a preacher who is preaching in the Spirit. That's the Father speaking to us and we need that and we should be glad when we hear the word of God even when it steps on our toes we should have fellowship in the church Hebrews 10.25 says not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together the, the believers it says not to forsake it so we should get together we should get together we should have fellowship because we, we no longer belong to the world the Lord said we're separate from the world and I'm about to make a tape on that, a teaching on how we are separated from the world. So we should be gathering together who, with people who believe like us, who have the same Father as we do. Yes, we can have friends that are in the world, friends as far as being a friend when they need help, we can tell, help them. We can talk to them about the Lord. But when they want to do the things that are not of the Lord, then that's where we draw the line as far as our friendship with them. But the Lord says, the Bible says, what does the darkness have in common with the light? So we should gather together. We, you should be in a church where they get together and they have fellowship. Because we need that. We need each other. Also in the church, we should be having the Lord's Supper. In Luke twenty-two nineteen, speaking of the Lord's Supper, the Lord says, do this in remembrance of me. So we should be having the Lord's Supper so we can, so we can uh, remind us what Jesus did for us. You know, I just want to say real quick, that uh, I, I, I was talking to a Catholic, and I said, why do we wear a cross, why do y'all wear crosses that have Jesus on it, being crucified? And their answer to me was, so it can remind us what he did. And I thought, well, you know, well, that's good, you know, we should remember how Jesus died on the cross for us. But Jesus is no longer on that cross. He has resurrected. He has set us free because his power over death over the grave you know I look at a cross with Jesus on it that yeah uh, that doesn't make me too uh, too excited that really doesn't seeing a cross without Jesus on it that makes me excited because I know he's no longer on that cross that he's here with us living in us because he has defeated the devil so having Jesus on the cross uh, I don't know about you but that bothers me that bothers me. Uh, the only uh, 
person that I know that wants Jesus still on the cross is the devil. He would love to see Jesus still on that cross. And that it didn't go any further than that. That he stayed on that cross. But he didn't. He resurrected. He defeated the devil. He defeated death. So no, we shouldn't have Jesus on the cross anymore. Well, there's other things we can remember that Jesus was on the cross. Just think about it. All you got to do is think about it. Well, Jesus died on the cross. But let's have a cross where there is no Jesus on it. A cross that shows he is no longer there. He has resurrected. He has given us our freedom because of that. Now, in the church, we also should, we should have prayer. In Ephesians 6.18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. We should always be praying. As Christians, that is one of our weapons that is a very powerful weapon for us, is prayer. The devil doesn't like it when we're, in our, when, when we're on our knees praying. He doesn't like that because he knows there's power in prayer. He knows when, we're on our, when, we're, when we are on our knees, we are very effective in the power of God. 